Our world is a large and fascinating place. It holds such wonders. It truly is a shame that most of us get to see so very little of it. And while it is true that you can find anything on the internet nowadays, even then we tend to miss some of the most interesting places and stories purely because there is such an overload of information available. There are so many amazing things, places and stories that get lost in the mix of it all. Well, today we would like to introduce you to Burundi, a small landlocked country in Eastern Africa. It is nicknamed the heart of Africa, not only because of its location, but also because, strangely enough, its shape actually looks like that of real heart. It is rich in culture and history, admittedly some of it not very pleasant. But still, it has become popular for its world-renowned coffee beans and natural beauty. It is a hidden gem filled with forested mountain ranges and breathtaking waterfalls. These mountain ranges flatten out to the east to create a plateau containing savanna grasslands, eucalyptus forests and banana groves. However, our interest lies towards the west, where for the greater part the country is bordered by Lake Tanganyika. This lake truly is something to behold. At 660 kilometers, it is the longest freshwater lake on earth. And at 1436 meters, it is the second deepest in the world. Lake Tanganyika covers an area of nearly 33,000 square kilometers, which is larger than Burundi itself. With such a long shoreline, and given Burundi's large rural population, it is no wonder that fishing forms a major part of daily life for those living close to the lake. They spend much of their time either next to, on or in the water. For many, their major source of sustenance comes from the lake. However, Lake Tanganyika is not without its dangers. There exists a very real threat to each and every man or woman in close proximity, and for those that act carelessly in the wrong place and at the wrong time, more often than not, it can be fatal. You see, while on the surface everything seems calm and peaceful, there is a dark and terrible force at work beneath. The shores of northeastern Tanganyika are home to a notorious serial killer. And while there exist many legends of monsters like the Great Loch Ness, the Chupacabra and Slender Man, this one is very much real. The murky waters of Lake Tanganyika hide a dangerous, skilled hunter with a taste for human flesh. And his name is Gustav the man -eater. Gustav is a Nile crocodile. Usually, they will grow to about 4.5 meters long and weigh up to 750 kilograms. And while they are known for their cunning and skill when it comes to hunting, it is very unusual for them to kill and eat humans. In fact, many people believe that they are simply misunderstood creatures and that they can actually be bonded with. I mean, just look at this guy. Jeepers, this guy needs help. His name is Cheeto and he would spend hours with Pocho every day until the croc sadly passed away. So, what makes Gustav so special, you ask? Well, Gustav, you see, is rumored to have killed around 300 people, an extremely large number for a single wild animal. It should make Gustav feel right at home with these kind of guys. Now, as is often the case with legendary monsters or disturbing serial kings, rumors can spread far and quick, while facts may be more difficult to come by. Gustav is like a shadow among the dark waters of the lake. He is feared by the locals, and those very few who have survived an encounter with him bear horrific scars. As time has passed, the rumors around Gustav have become numerous, some even tending towards superstition. He's 12 meters long. He's red in color. He grows grass out of the top of his head to better camouflage himself. Some locals even say that Gustav's killings are not by accident or chance, but rather is driven by his pure dislike of humans, and he actively seeks out humans simply for the sake of killing them. 
You see, a strange thing about Gustav is that he doesn't necessarily eat each human he kills. It would seem that his killings are not driven by the basic instinct to survive. But what then? And what also makes it worse is that the amount of fishing going on in Burundi and the sometimes questionable boats and decisions made about where and when to fish, it's not surprising that Gustav's kill count is so abnormally high. One thing's for sure, ladies and gentlemen, you won't find me in those waters anytime soon. I'm not that fond of getting sunburned in any case. Now before we take you back to where Gustav's story started, if you like our content and you want to see more of it, take a moment to like, subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. It only takes a second and it really helps us grow this channel. Thanks. Now, back to the video. It all started as far back as 1987, when people started going missing along the banks of the lake. Fishermen would leave their homes out for a day of fishing to provide for their families, but sadly, some of them would never return. When the number of reports started growing and growing, and the sightings all yielded similar descriptions of a monstrous crocodile near the areas where people are disappearing, it was clear that something had to be done. The local population took it upon themselves to kill Gustav, and he bears the scars of spears and bullets to prove it. Yet, after several attempts, no one ever was successful. Gustav, it seems, is not only tough, but also much smarter than most give him credit for. Eventually, the locals gave up, and Gustav continued to terrorize them all along the shores of Tanganyika, killing unwary fishermen and bathers alike. Then, in the late 1990s, a herpetologist named Patrice Fay took a particular interest in Gustav. He made it his mission to relocate Gustav, as much for his own sake as for the local population. Fay spent several years tracking and studying the monstrous Nile crocodile and planning how he would capture him alive. Eventually, he got to the point where another team decided to capture him for relocation as well and naturally Faye got involved with him. None of them knew it at the time, but the very little footage of Gustav they obtained would become some of the only real footage of Gustav ever captured. The documentary Capturing the Killer Croc aired in 2004, and it shows these endeavors of the team setting out to capture Gustav. From the little footage we do have, Gustav's size is clearly out of the ordinary and the scars he bears from spears and bullet wounds can be seen as well. This proved to many doubters that the killings and sightings did indeed relate to the same crop. It showed that Gustav is not only a fierce killer, but also a survivor, and this has only exacerbated the claims and myths surrounding him. Some locals even say that Gustav has an unnatural intelligence, that he is under a spell which gives him strength, makes him indestructible, and fuels him with anger and hatred towards the locals. Now, we'll take that with a pinch of salt. Now, regarding that relocation effort, and we recommend you watch the documentary for the full story, but needless to say, just like all previous attempts at capturing Gustav, the legendary croc evaded even this team of experts. They even tried using a large cage with live bait. The cage was so big, it had to be carried to the shore of the lake where Gustav was last spotted by no less than 40 people. And the cage had to be big. Remember how we said the average Nile croc grows to about 4.5 meters and weighed about 750 kilos? Well, Gustav was estimated to be 6 meters long and nearing, if not exceeding, 1000 kilograms at that time. Experts estimated he was around 60 years old back then, which is a lot in the wild. Generally, a croc of this age would not live much longer as they tend to lose their teeth. However, once again, Gustav shocked them 
as his teeth still seemed to be in extremely good condition, meaning he would most probably live for many years to come, and somewhat terrifying, even continue to grow. It is no wonder that the local population was desperate for Faye and the team to succeed. However, it was not to be. After many attempts and patient waiting and trying again and again, being outsmarted by Gustav time and time again, the team ran out of time and had to give up. The final straw came when one night, as heavy rain rolled over Burundi, it caused the camera that was set up at the cage to go out. And would you believe it, but on this particular night, of all nights, Gustav cleverly, almost knowingly and teasingly, mysteriously, made his unwitnessed appearance precisely when there could be no footage. The following morning, the team came upon the site, the live bait gone, the cage set up ruined as it was tipped and half fallen into the lake, with Gustav nowhere to be seen. After this, Faye and the team packed their bags, leaving without achieving their goal. Speculation is that Gustav still roams the lake, exceeding expectation not only in size, but in age as well. Depending on what estimate age you believe to be true from back in the early 2000s, he could be as old as 80 years, or even more. As with most legendary creatures, it can be difficult to separate truth from conjecture. But one thing is certain, approach the shorelines of Lake Tanganyika with great care. Beneath the murky waters, there could be a very real and experienced human killer. And as much superstition as there may be around Gustav, his propensity towards killing humans has one very real driving factor, his size. In an interview with BBC, Faye said the following, He is enormous. He is three times as big as the other crocodiles in Burundi. He is not very fast and cannot feed on what the other crocodiles in Burundi eat, namely fish and small mammals. He attacks slow prey, which are easy to capture. Hmm, slow and easy to capture. That, ladies and gentlemen, means humans. So, whatever happened to Gustav? Reports say he was last seen near Burundi Shores in 2015. Some believe that he passed away of old age, and locals since started approaching the shores of Tanganyika with more peace of mind. But then again, as the years have proven, it would be very unwise to underestimate Gustav. In recent years, sightings of a massive croc have become more and more frequent in the southern parts of Lake Tanganyika, which spans all the way to the northern tip of Zambia. Some believe that this is none other than Gustav. Is it possible that this extraordinary croc which has evaded human spears and rifles and capture for so many years, smartly decided that it's time to move to a new location where he won't be actively hunted. Somewhere where his reputation is less known, his playground less guarded, and his victims unaware that Gustav the Man-Eater has come to town. Until next time. Cheers.